Even man, it feels like I'm surrounded. You never leave my side. Oh, nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in awe of your amazing way. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. Oh, what a song to sing. Oh, what a song to sing. Oh, what a song to sing. Jesus, you love me. And I love you, God. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in awe of your amazing I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in awe of your amazing way. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. All right. So the love of God that transcends everything that we experience. Okay. <laughs> So what would be our response? Our response would be that God would speak and we would, we would be willing to obey. We would be obedient to his call. I bring thee, dear Jesus, my all. No hold back from thee any part Obedient to thy welcome call I yield thee the whole of my heart Oh speak, oh speak while before thee I pray And oh Lord, what seem at thee good and my heart shall obey. The worst upon ones was my will. My feet ran in self chosen way. I pleasure henceforth to fulfill. Spend all the rest of my days. Oh, speak. Oh, speak while before thee I pray. And, O oh Lord, what seemed thee good? And my heart shall obey. Doubts that have darkened my soul. The shame and the fears that I hear. Oh, banish and bid me behold A clean heart within me creep Oh, speak Oh, speak while before thee I pray And, O oh Lord, what seemeth thee good And my heart shall obey Heart that is loyal and true, unspotted and pure in thy sight, a love that would anything do, a life 
given up to the fire. Oh, speak. Oh, speak while before thee I pray. And, oh, Lord, what seem at the good. And my heart shall obey. Lord, make me, I pray thee, a sin. As holy I'd be as I am. With thee, since there is no restraint. Give me this blessing, blood. Oh, speak. Oh, speak while before thee I pray, and O oh Lord, what seem at thee go? And my heart shall obey, and O oh Lord, what seem at thee go? And my heart shall obey. Let's pray. God, this is the prayer of our hearts this evening, that you would speak and we would be able to hear your voice. And Father, whatever is seeming good for you, help us to hear that word. Help us to hear it with all diligence. And Father, when you, when you reveal your heart to us, O Lord, teach us to obey. Help us, O Lord, to be saints in this generation, to live like how you want us to live. And there would be no, no delay from my part. There would be no resistance from my part, even as you speak these words to me. Teach us to obey. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. We give ourselves to you this evening, O Lord. May the Holy Spirit help us to understand the word so that we may obey the word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so welcome back after a long, long gap. And uh, let's get back to where we were. We were in the chapter of uh, Luke chapter 9. We were in chapter 9. And uh, Ajit had put that in the group, but... Sorry to say, last time we finished the class, I think we finished chapter 9. So we are in chapter 10 of uh, Luke, the Luke's Gospel. So turn with me to Luke chapter 10. We're going to read a little portion from verse 1 right down to 16. Okay, Luke chapter 10 verses 1 to 16. All right. So keep your Bibles ready, keep your notepad and your pen ready. And let's go in. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves, carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, Eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than that town. Woe to you, Korazin. Woe to you, Bethesda. Be sorry, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes, but it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. 
and you kafarnom will you be exalted exalted to heaven you shall be brought down to hades the one who hears you hears me and the one who rejects you rejects me and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me all right so let's go into this passage verse one after this the lord appointed 72 others okay now this whole chapter chapter 10 is talking about the three fold ministry of a christian okay the three fold ministry of a christian so every christian believer is left in this world to accomplish god's work okay, i'll say it again every christian believer you know the moment you become a believer a child of god god does not translate you automatically into heaven you are remaining here till his return or uh, till you die you are left here on earth and this leaving you here on the earth is for a purpose so you ask this question what is a christian supposed to do in this world once he is saved he doesn't belong to the world he belongs to the kingdom he belongs to he is a heavenly citizen now so why is he left here why is he here in the world and that question is answered in this chapter okay what does a christian do in the world and this whole chapter says three things a christian is supposed to do three things in this world and what are the three things the three things are first of all in verses 1 to 24 we see that he is supposed to be or she is supposed to be an ambassador of christ okay ambassador is one who represents the lord in this world you know like how we have ambassadors in our country the indian ambassador to china okay now he is posted there to convey to the chinese government what the indian government thinks about the rules that they implement the things that they say about india the things that they deal with india everything is expressed to the chinese government through the through our man in china who is called the ambassador of india okay so the indian ambassador is responsible for communicating whatever the government of india wants to communicate to china and suppose china has to reply they will not be able to directly contact our government they will actually pass the message on to the ambassador and say okay these are the new reforms that we have these are the new laws that we are implementing which is going to impact the indians who are living in china and that news will be conveyed back to the indian government by the ambassador so he is the man who represents india in that foreign government the same role is done here in the kingdom uh, of the world you are representing jesus christ the king of the kingdom of god he is being represented here in the world by each one of us christians believers okay so what does a christian do the first thing that a christian does is he he is a representative of the lord in this world whatever jesus wants to communicate to the world he communicates through his representative his ambassador and we are people who bring back the feedback also to the lord it's not that the lord doesn't know everything but yes we in our prayers we communicate to the lord the things that we are experiencing so we as ambassadors we are the representative of the lord in this world verses 1 to 24 then verses 25 to 37 tells us our second responsibility as christians what is that verse 25 to 37 tells us that we are not only ambassadors we are also neighbors we are neighbors we are looking for opportunities to show mercy in the name of christ our circumstances haven't changed we have changed we have become children of god but god has placed us in the middle of a pagan uh, you know pagan group pagan community god has kept us in the middle of the you are in the world not of the world okay which means the world is not in there in the christian but we are kept inside the world so when we are in the world we are called to be neighbors when somebody came and asked jesus you no know, whom uh, should uh, you know uh, who is my neighbor and jesus explained to them who the neighbor is and he said anybody whom you are ministering to is a neighbor okay so as neighbors we are here to show god's mercy through our actions through our words so god's mercy is being displayed in and through our actions our words okay so we are neighbors and we are looking for opportunities to show mercy in the name of christ that is why god has kept us in this world see the world can't see jesus christ the world may not even read the bible and you might be you know somebody said this in a song long back you know you might be the only bible that a non christian ever reads so be be very careful how you show yourself to the world how you witness to the world 
your acts of mercy will be seen by the world the world is watching you and me and what will they take away from you what will we, what will they see in you will they see jesus in you the kind of mercy that jesus showed to the people would you be able to show through your life your words and that is what the world is looking for and if you and i want to impact the world as neighbors we have to be channels of mercy we have to be channels of mercy okay so we are also neighbors we are not only ambassadors we are also neighbors and we are looking for opportunities to show mercy in the name of christ thirdly was 38 to 42 see at the heart of ministry is our devotion to christ okay so if you are devoted to christ if you are sold out to christ then we must be worshipers so we are ambassadors our ministry is one of ambassadors to the world we are also neighbors who are looking for every opportunity to show mercy and we are worshipers we are placed in this world as true worshipers the world is worshiping all kinds of trash all kinds of junk all kinds of dead idols and here god has placed us in the middle as a community of worshipers so what do we do we have to take time to listen to his voice the word of god speaks to us daily so it is essential that we go by our master's voice i remember old time back you know there was this uh, company in india called i mean in an in international company that was called his master's voice the logo was actually a dog sitting in front of a gramophone you know and that was the logo of that company and the dog will be looking into that gramophone what is he looking intently to hear his master's voice you know and we are like that dog you know puppy dog who's looking into that gramophone waiting to listen to his voice what does god want me to know today and the word of god speaks to us so our at the heart of our ministry is worship and we have we can't worship god without knowing his communication his word so when he communicates to us the worshiper listens to his word and then we respond to him when he speaks to us we hear and then we respond to him in prayer so this two way process called communication is happening in our lives every day as worshipers and this will impact our ministry this will be impact how we become ambassadors if we don't listen to his word what will we speak to the to the world outside if you don't listen to christ how what will we speak to the world outside if you don't listen to the you know voice of god speaking to us how will we become channels of mercy so in our prayers as we are worshipers we intercede for the people around us people that we are ministering to so it's a devotion work that we are doing okay so the three fold ministry that a christian has in this world is ambassadors who represent him second neighbors who will be looking for opportunities to share mercy and thirdly we will be worshipers we take time to listen to the world we take time to commune with the lord so whether it is on the on the highway or you know we are in the harvest field or we are at our house it's a great privilege you know it's the highest privilege that god has given to us it's a, it's something of greatest joy that god has given to us and what is that to do the will of god wherever god has placed us it may be in an office it may be in a church it may be at a in a house it may be in a family it may be anywhere it may even be inside a jail you're called to do the will of god okay you're called to do the will of god so whether we are on the harvest field or we are on the highway or we are at home it is our highest privilege and our greatest joy to know god's will and to do it know god's will and to do it okay so with that is the introduction let's go into the chapter we are only focusing on one aspect of the ministry today and that is being an ambassador for him we look at neighbors and we look at worshipers in the coming weeks right let's go now this event of jesus sending out the 72 should not be confused with chapter 9 verse 1 to you know 9 uh, actually talks about uh, the apostles being sent out you know the 12 apostles were sent out by jesus he gave them power and authority and he sent them out chapter 9 verse 1 we can't confuse that with this why because that is only sending out the apostles here there is no mention that these were apostles maybe the apostles were with them but what he sent out were this time was not the apostles they were the disciples okay so it's in, they're, they're an anonymous group of disciples nobody's name is mentioned there nobody in particular is mentioned there but they were followers of jesus they were disciples now 
one one uh, inkling you will get in this in verse one so, um, appointed 72 others see so there's no name of anybody who's mentioned they're not given the title of apostles but they are sent out okay but the mission both these mission chapter 9 verse 1 to 8 and this one also looks very similar right why is it similar why does it look like you know uh, the same kind of trip it looks very similar because the same master has sent them and reason number two is that he is making them do the same basic work again okay so they were sent by the same master and they were sent to do the same basic job so both these things are very similar there also he only sent them there also they he asked them to do the same job here also he's he's the same master and he has sent them to do the same basic job so the similarity is there and it ends there why because there it is mentioned as apostles here it is mentioned as others or 72 disciples now what is the unique thing about this the difference is the location where they ministered the apostles went and ministered at galilee in chapter 9 verses 1 to 8 the apostles went and ministered at the place called galilee and here these men were ministering to this place called judea okay the whole of judea is where the 72 others went and ministered so the men here are not called apostles but they're only called disciples and some texts actually have uh, you know 70 as the number some texts have 72 as the number that's because of the you know we have enough and more texts are uh, describing both as 70 and 72 uh, we have taken both you know some have footnotes underneath in the in the column at the, at the foot of the uh, page you'll find that some uh, some translations say it is 70 or 72 okay so there is no uh, you know, anomaly there it's either 70 or 72 that's okay it doesn't affect our faith in any way so we take it what was god intending god was giving them a mission okay even though he's not mentioning them as apostles by name the ministry that they are doing is apostleship okay why is that see apostles or apostello the word apostle actually means sent one sent one these men were also sent people okay they were sent by him as ambassadors they were sent by jesus so the commission that was given to the seven the 12 was also given to the 72 what is the commission the commission was to represent the lord wherever they went they had to represent the lord they were going as the representative of the lord himself so it's like being an ambassador for a king or an ambassador for a government. You're going as a representative of the or the spokesperson of a government. So Jesus gives them the opportunity to go as the representative of the king. Two by two, they go. Okay, They were sent by him. So according to the definition of the term apostle, the Greek word apostolo, they have been sent by him. The word apostle also means sent before him. Okay. Which, which means to prepare the way for his coming. You remember John the Baptist was sent like that. You know, before Jesus was uh, started his ministry, John was sent into the world and he was sent to prepare the way for Jesus, to prepare the way for the king. The same way, Jesus was going to come behind these men. After these men finished their ministry and went back, then Jesus would come to the same places. And so they were like preparing the way for the king to come. You'll see that in verse 1 again. Uh, and send them on ahead of him, two by two. See, Ahead of him means he was coming at the back. And they were going ahead of him. So this was a high calling. To prepare the way for the Lord is a high calling. You know, what we and I, we, you and I, we are called to do the same thing. We are sent by him to prepare the hearts of the people for the Lord. That's what an apostle is. So we are not called apostles by name, but we do the work of an apostle. That's what Paul said, told Timothy, you know, do the work that you have been sent to do. You're called and sent for this purpose, to prepare the hearts of the people for the Lord to come into their hearts. Okay. Now, even though it is a high calling, it is a difficult calling. Verse 2, um, he says, and he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly. It's a difficult calling. Harvest is hard work by itself. Hard work, harvest is a very hard work. And the, the downside is that the laborers are few. 
which means if there are five laborers in a uh, in a 10 acre field they have to do more labor they have to do more work so it would be good if you have more hands at work right but what does jesus ask them to pray pray uh, therefore pray earnestly to the lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest okay so you are not called to pray and make this harvest an easy job okay? don't try to pray for an easy job don't try to you know pray and ask the lord lord make it simple for me make it easy for me no you are called to pray for more hands who would come in and help you so that the work would be done faster and easier you see so it's a difficult work to which the lord has called us and even um, some some are there helping us but we are not to pray for an easier job we are here to pray for more helping hands more laborers help them to come in lord help them to come and join us in this work that should be our prayer so god is not wanting to make this job lighter for anybody the lord wants us to pray for more helping hands to come in join in and whom should we pray to to the lord of the harvest who's lord of the harvest jesus himself see so we ask the lord of the harvest to send more laborers into the vineyard and we go out and do the work so the important thing that we should notice here is that we are going to pray for laborers not spectators right spectators are people who come to watch the match right they come and sit in the stands and they will come and say what a horrible batting you know this fellow was supposed to play the hook shot he played the pull shot and the ball went on hit the stumps and they'll stand in the stands and they will keep commenting on it they'll keep criticizing but they will not come down and play right so spectators are not needed laborers are needed too many people are praying that somebody else would do the job which they are not willing to do themselves and that's the problem of the church today we are sitting in the pews and praying lord send that person to this place send this brother to that place send this pastor to that place will you go you say no 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 lord i have other work here you know i am busy i i, I but i'll pray for that person you know we are unwilling to do the work ourselves but we are happy to you know send other people and if you send also we will criticize that person and we will criticize the ministry also but we are unwilling to go so too many are praying for somebody else to go and do the job which they themselves are unwilling to do which they themselves are unwilling to dirty their hands okay right? so god is not asking us to pray for spectators god is asking us to pray for laborers sometimes the answer to your prayer might be you yourself okay i'll say it again sometimes the answer what is your prayer praying for laborers right the answer to your prayer the laborer that god is going to send might be you yourself no so be willing to dirty your hands for the lord now it was not only a difficult calling it was also a dangerous calling verse 3 go your way behold i am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves you know so he was sending them into enemy territory verse 17 the 72 returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to you, to us in your name so he's sending them among you know demon possessed people he's sending them into the enemy's territory you see so it's a dangerous calling they are sent like lambs among wolves lambs are not happy to be among wolves wolves are dangerous creatures lambs are pawam creatures but here the lambs are sent to the among the wolves so it's a dangerous calling but as long as they rely on the lord's strength they can keep winning the battle the lord will protect the lord will make them victorious in the middle of the enemy's territory and that's the joy that a christian has many a times when we go out into the world you know it is enemy territory we have faced with persecution you know, harsh behavior rude words insults but we are among wolves as lambs and we rely on the lord's strength and the lord will win the battle for us so this, uh, somebody said this i think his name is a very famous preacher you know his name is vance havner i i love this man's writing i love this man's work 
he's a, a amazing evangelist who lived you know almost a century ago he says any man who takes jesus christ seriously becomes the target for the devil <laughs> any man who takes jesus christ and his calling seriously becomes the target of the devil and most of the church members they don't give enough trouble to the opposition <laughs> that's why the devil just ignores them because they are not raising enough problems for him so they are very much compromising they are very much lukewarm so devil says i don't have to mess my hands with you yeah. in the book of acts it talks about you know the sons of skeva where you know they 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 call upon the lord whom paul serves in the name of jesus whom paul preaches come out you know they tell this uh, evil evil spirit and the evil spirit asked them a question back i know paul and i know jesus but who are you guys <laughs> the devil does not know who these guys are why because they don't cause any problem for the devil they are all on the same side you see so when the devils come together in their meeting in the conference who would they be discussing on they would be discussing on paul they would be discussing on jesus christ and his strategy but would they be discussing you and me they will only discuss you and me if we cause problem in their territory <laughs> if you are lukewarm and you don't give enough trouble to the enemy the enemy is not going to be disturbed about us so any man who takes jesus christ and his calling seriously will become the target of the devil and most church members don't give enough trouble to arouse the opposition i didn't say that vance havner said that well, i believe it okay let's look at the next one verses 4 to 8 carry no money bag no knapsack no sandals and greet no one on the road whenever you um, whenever whichever house you enter first say peace be you no know, when you look at it it looks like they don't carry anything they're going free handed you no know, empty handed they're just walking into houses saying shalom and then entering into the house living there eating their food doing the ministry coming out what is what is required here two things are required here if you want to do the ministry you have to do it god's way you can't do it how you know jesus said don't take it but i'm going to take it anyway that's not the way the disciples went okay now this is not the criteria for a modern disciple also okay as an evangelist when you go out this is not the way you go if i if you am you are going to pondicherry to preach the gospel you have to take your clothes and you have to take your uh, food supply you have to take your money with you right so this is not for the modern person this is for the 70 when he send them out for 72 when he send them out for the 12 when he send them out this is specially for those group of people and to them jesus was telling this now what we can infer from this is what can be applied which means see two things are required for this ministry to become successful one is discipline and the second is faith discipline to make sure that you obey what the lord tells you faith to take the lord at his word if god says he will provide he will provide because it is his ministry if the lord says he will protect you among the wolves he will protect you that is his word and we have to have faith in his word so discipline and faith are required to do the job but if you look at this passage you will find that there is an urgency the calling comes with an urgency it says you have to do it quickly don't take don't waste your time on taking things packing things don't waste your time on greeting people and you know nice things and and, and uh, you know all those kind of formalities that's not why you are being sent so there is an urgency to this work that god has entrusted to us you are not to be overburdened with supplies you are not to be delayed by greetings so trust god that he will provide home he will provide food he will provide everything that you require for the ministry to become successful but you have to trust in him to provide that you don't have to be overburdened with it you don't have to be anxious about it god promised it he will provide it Now, turn with me to 10 verse 7 he says and the uh, and remain in the same house eating and drinking what they provide for the laborer deserves his wages god knows that the laborer needs these things and he will provide it through his brothers and sisters in the work you see so the people who are hosting him become partners in the ministry by hosting that man giving him shelter giving him food they become part of the ministry you see so it's a very important role that the house owner is playing or the people in the family are playing they adjust to the man so that his work would become more effective turn with me to first corinthians 
chapter 9 and verse 14 first corinthians chapter 9 and verse 14 in the same way the lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel you see so there is no harm in a gospel preacher being paid for the work that is being done so how do you, how does he he doesn't sell things you know to get his get his salary to get his livelihood no who provides for him the body of christ provides for him you see so it's god's plan that the workers of the gospel should get their living by the gospel first timothy chapter 5 and verse 18 first timothy chapter 5 and verse 18 5 and verse 18. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox when it, is, when it treads out the grain and the laborer deserves his wages. See? So if you are working in the kingdom and you're working for the Lord, you're ministering the gospel, you need to get paid. And God says he will provide. From where? From the body of Christ he will provide. You see? So there is nothing insulting for a man of God to trust in faith and depend on the Lord for his supplies. You see, initially when I joined the ministry, you know, I was feeling very much indebted to the people for providing my needs, you know, and there are some sponsors who actually, when, when you come to collect the sponsorship, you know, from them for the ministry, you feel as though that you're obligated to that person. And that person says, a oh, brother, since you are going that way, you know, please, uh, do this, uh, you know, pay these bills also for me or do this shopping also for me. I would gladly do it as a service unto the Lord, but he demands it because he's paying you your salary, you see. Then I told that person, see, you're not giving me my salary. You're not giving me my salary. The Lord is giving me my salary. You have promised to bless the Lord with the money that you have. So you pay the Lord and the Lord will give it to me, you see. So I'm not looking at the sponsor to provide for my need. I'm looking at the Lord to provide for my need and the Lord will provide through the sponsors only, you see. So the Lord, the sponsors have to give to the Lord and the Lord will give to the man of God, you see. This is the way God's plan works. This is the way the kingdom works. And surprisingly, you know, some, some people think that, you know, they are entitled to it. No, nobody's entitled to anything, right? We're not entitled to even our salary, but the Lord provides it for us so that it is an honor for a person who's hardworking to receive his salary the same way. If you're working hard for the gospel, the missionary needs to be paid. Okay, so as a child of God, do not be embarrassed to accept hospitality. Okay, do not be embarrassed to receive hospitality from the body of Christ. That's how God has designed it. So, now I'm not saying that you should go and give your money to every Tom, Dick and Harry. We already did a session on how to give your payments, how to give your dues correctly, right? Be wise when you give out uh, you know, uh, sponsorships and when you give out support to the, to the people in the, in the kingdom, make sure that they are in the kingdom. Make sure you're supporting the right people. Otherwise, you will be actually you know, investing your money and people will be swindling you. Don't let people deceive you, for, you know, with regard to your money. So be very careful where you're investing your money. You're, you must be investing in the Lord's work and the Lord's work must flourish. So that's the, that's the idea with which we give. Okay. So be very careful. You know, even the money that is entrusted, you are accountable for it. And you have to give an account of it to the Lord. So the Lord will ask you, you know, who asked you to put your money in that particular ministry, which you know is corrupt. And you know, they are buying uh, helicopters and they are buying uh, you know, uh, flights and uh, trains in the name of that man. And that man became richer and richer and richer. And you saw that from outside and still you kept paying him money. That's not what God desires. So check if the ministry is true and honest and the worker is really working for the Lord, then be, be all the more eager to support the work and the ministry. So, and there's people who receive it, who are into full-time ministry, who are depending on, uh, you know, salaries from the ministry, I would say, don't be embarrassed to accept hospitality. Let's go on. It says, you enter into a house and you say, peace. They reject it, then God is going to bring judgment on them. You see, this is the pattern that God works. 
the ambassador is sent to a person or to a city and he pronounces peace. In the name of Christ, you have peace. You believe in Jesus Christ, you will have peace with God and peace with men. So this is the ministry. This is the message that God wants us to preach. Peace. God has you know, provided peace on the cross because Jesus died on your behalf. God is willing to forgive your sins. And God is willing to have peace with man. He's willing to forgive man's sins. This is the message of peace that you and I are pronouncing. It is the good news. When they reject the good news, then God will bring judgment. Okay, Deuteronomy 20. Turn with me to the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verses 10 onwards. Deuteronomy 20 verses 10 onwards. When you draw near to a city to fight against it, offer terms of peace to it. So this is from the Old Testament itself, you see. And if it, is, if it responds to you peaceably and it opens to you, then all the people who are found in it shall do forced labor for you and shall serve you. But if it makes no peace with you, but makes war against you, then you shall besiege it. And when the Lord your God gives it into your hands, you shall put all its males to the sword. But the women and the little ones, the livestock and everything else in the city, all its spoils you shall take as plunder for yourself. And you shall enjoy the spoils of your enemies which the Lord your God has given you. Thus you shall do to all the cities that are very far from you. See, so first goes the message of peace. And when they reject the message of peace, then comes judgment. So what does it mean? It means that to reject the ambassador of God and his message is a serious offense. It's a serious offense for which that person will have to give account, for which the city will have to give account. So it's a serious offense to reject the ambassador of God and his message. That's what this passage teaches us. Let's go on. Now, I told you the special power that was available for the disciples in this passage. And in chapter 9, the special power that was available for the apostles are not available to you and me today. Why? Let me, check, let me clarify on that. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. This is a great commission which Jesus gave us. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the ends of the age. Nowhere is it mentioned miracles. Here it is mentioned, the emphasis is on preaching and proclaiming the message. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. You see? So today the emphasis given on you and me is proclaiming, preaching the message, make disciples, teach them to obey everything. Miracles are given Secondary importance, not primary importance. Primary importance, the emphasis is on preaching and proclaiming the message. If God wants to attest you with your miracle with miracles, God will do it. But that is not the emphasis. Emphasis is on the word of God. Preach it, proclaim it. Turn with me again to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verses 46 to 49. Luke chapter 24, 46 to 49. And said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning with Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. You see. So here again, the proclamation is given the importance. The message is given the importance. Miracles are not given the importance, you see. To them, miracles were given. Why? Because the word of God had not been completed by them. Now the finished word of God has been entrusted into your hands and my hands. So Jesus just proclaim. That's enough. Proclaim the news. Proclaim the peace. Proclaim the gospel. That's our job. Miracles will follow. If God wants to do miracles, he will do it. But the emphasis is not on miracles. But then the emphasis was on miracles. Because the word of God had not been completed. At that time. So let's go into the, the, the woes. 
there are three cities mentioned which are ancient cities and there are three cities which jesus is mentioning which is current okay when jesus is living those cities are alive and active jesus went through all those cities the ancient cities the three cities that are mentioned are compared to the new three cities the ancient cities are sodom tyre and sidon okay sodom tyre and sidon are the three cities which are the ancient cities mentioned here sodom you'll find it in genesis chapter 19 how god dealt with it tyre and sidon you will find it in the in the books of ezekiel ezekiel chapter 26 to 28 ezekiel chapters 26 to 28 and isaiah chapter 23 i'll say it again sodom genesis 19 tyre and sidon ezekiel 26 to 28 chapters isaiah chapter 23 if you read those passages you'll understand how god judged those cities of sodom tyre and sidon and jesus compares them with three modern cities where jesus has already visited chorazin bethsaida capernaum old testament sodom tyre and sidon new testament chorazin bethsaida capernaum and jesus compares these two three sets of cities and he says <coughs> those three cities they were judged by god in the ancient days but modern times today these three cities Chorazin, Bethsaida and Capernaum they are they have to give account and he says comparatively those guys are better off because more was not revealed to them more miracles were not done in them more message was not preached there but here Jesus himself came and he preached the gospel he did miracles in front of their eyes but the people refused to repent and Jesus says they have to now give an account they have rejected the offer of peace they will be judged now and he says during the judgment day those three ancient cities will be better off than you guys because to one who has been revealed more more will be asked you see so who is better the people of the old testament or people of the new testament people of the new testament who have this word of god in their hands you and i are more accountable god will ask us more because the greater revelation has been given to you and me you see so if they were destroyed in the ancient times what chance is there that you and i will escape what chance is there that corasin betsaida and capernaum will escape no chance jesus says if they have rejected the message of jesus if they have rejected the offer of peace if they have denied all the miracles that have happened in front of their eyes they have lesser chance they have no chance of being let loose god is going to bring judgment on these three cities if god brought judgment on those ancient cities which only received little bit of revelation how much more these modern cities which received greater revelation okay so let me conclude with this says the one was 16 and 17 says the one who hears you sorry with 16 the one who hears you hears me and the one who rejects you rejects me and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me to hear the ambassador of christ means to hear god himself to despise the representative means despising god himself you know so it is a serious offense says lord if you deny the word of the lord which proceeds from the servant of god you're denying the lord himself turn with me to john chapter 20 and verse 21 and we'll wind up with this john chapter 20 and verse 21 <clears throat> says jesus said to them again peace be with you as the father has sent me even so i am sending you how did the father send him with the message of peace with the gospel of salvation and we are called to go out into all the world with the same gospel of peace the gospel of salvation just as the father has sent jesus the same way he is sending us into the world if they have rejected his word then he they have rejected him if they reject the ambassador of christ they have rejected him second corinthians chapter 5 and verses 18 to 
Second Corinthians chapter five, verses eighteen to twenty-one. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them, but entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God this is the message you and i are carrying this is the imploring that we have to do if they reject our message they reject the master what a great privilege and honor that we have as ambassadors of Christ to represent him to be sent by him and to be sent before him god is going to come again But this time he's going to come as the judge. He came as the peace giver the first time. Now he's going to come as the judge. Before the judge comes, the message of peace peace must be proclaimed all over the world to people whom you know, people who are distant from you, people who are even are our enemies. To them, the message of peace should be conveyed. That is the urgency that the ambassador has in his heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you have called us. the high calling as ambassadors of christ to be sent by you and to be sent before you is a high calling but it's also a difficult calling oh lord the work is hard without laborers in the field to help us the work is hard it's great toil and it's also dangerous toil because we are sent as sheep among wolves and we'll be shown no mercy but the victory that we have is because the lord's strength is with us help us to be disciplined and help us to be full of faith that we may be able to accomplish all that god wants us to do in this lifetime here and now help us to know the urgency of the call we have only this hour we have only this minute to proclaim the message help us to do it with all diligence in jesus precious name we pray amen